the instinctual solution would be what you have to do is find meaning in life, right? Like, that's the standard answer. Like, if you're unhappy and your life has no meaning, go and find meaning. Like, we have this Discord thing that you can join to where people talk about what's wrong with the world. I think that's useful. But what I want everyone to understand is that in, in Kevin's case, it's not just finding meaning. It's finding when meaning went away. Because when you were nine or ten, like, life hopefully has meaning. Like, it's just, it's simple meaning, but it's meaning. Calling you. Buddy. Yeah, we're going to do meditation. Don't worry. Promised you guys meditation, we're going to do it. But I feel like we have to do this real quick. Hey, can Lupus? you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Can you hear I, me? I, I... Yeah, I don't have a webcam, and I'm from Denmark, so I would hope the uh, that's the okay. accent isn't. All right, cool. No problem. Can you guys hear Lupus? Okay. So Lupus, you you made a statement earlier about you feel like your suffering is because you have a lot of expectations. Uh, I, I would think so. Like yeah. So tell um, me what you mean by that. I think every time I, I want to make a change or when I view my life, um, it's it's really hard to uh, it, it's hard to uh, <laughs> formulate. That's okay. Um, take your time. So when I think of, um, for example, what what really ignited uh, how I feel right now is uh, the breakup. I had with my uh, girlfriend and I came to a realization that I had built up everything uh, in my life around being with her and nothing about being with me. So the attachment to, to every thought I had in the future was based really around being with her and not being with my, like with myself, yeah. I think. Um, so yeah. Yeah, so I think that's, that's, so th I think this is going to be a short call. You're welcome to come back on later. But I think that's right. the crux of it, right? So yeah. here's the reason that you don't have a life worth living is because you constructed this castle of a life with her in your mind. And so that yeah. was the life that was worth living. And it involved her, like you built this castle with her in mind, and she was a part of every brick. Each of those bricks that you placed with her in mind is one attachment. This is where you were going to live. This is what Mondays would be like. This is what Tuesdays would be like. This is when you would or wouldn't have kids or you guys were going to talk about having kids. You're going to visit family, not visit family. Everything in life involves her. That's what I'm hearing from you. Yeah, and, and uh, the, the way that, that I've thought about it is like how I feel now uh, on my education and on my everyday life is that I... I have no desire to complete my final education uh, because the f the uh, um the desire was to like go to work and then come home to her. It wasn't to be Absolutely. content with work. Yeah. So so do you guys see this? Do you see how like the reason that so this isn't necessarily depression, right? This is an attachment to a fantasy. And fulfillment of that fantasy was the driving force in Lupus's life. Like, it was all to create this life. And now that the girlfriend is out of the picture, the life comes crumbling down. And all of your reasons for living and suffering and trying, suffering isn't the right word, for like, you know, doing things that are not fun, were based on this ideal. So now, Lupus, how old are you? What do I call uh, you, by the way? Uh, you can call me Kevin, if it's okay. better. Sure. Uh, but how I feel is that even without her, I'm still sad. Like, I don't know how, to, it's yeah. really hard to formulate yeah, what so I'm I, I really think you feeling. Definitely, but. Yeah, so I think you have, so I think the tricky thing here is that you have sadness. How long ago did y'all break up? Uh, it, it was um, one week ago. Um, there we go. Okay. But the, um, like the feeling of non-fulfillment or the, the feeling of, um, of sadness and and that whole charade has has been going on for years. Um, 
surrounding a couple of traumatic events and i think the i i was i think that i was sad before i met her but she made the like the reasons to live better like hmm. i i didn't really have any reasons to do anything before meeting her and then when i met her like everything was um based around this whole fact and we we've, okay. we've been together for 5 years so so the state of being unhappy has been really long but she has yeah. she made the whole uh, like so not suffering you you distinguish that but but being sad worth it because i could go home to her exactly so i want you guys i want everyone and you to understand this kevin the sadness in her your relationship with her are independent things that's what i've been saying all along and the problem is that your lack of fulfillment could be numbed because of the positivity of your relationship with her yeah i I see that yeah so like it's only now it's only now that i realize this yes and so this is the big problem is that everyone is going to think that you're feeling unfulfilled because you broke up with her or she broke up with you or whatever. But you have to understand that your search for meaning predated her. Yeah. And that the only way to fix that problem is to find meaning. Like, you can forget it. You can distract yourself with girlfriends, video games, parties, booze. You can distract yourself as much as you want to. But this is my whole point. This is what Buddha realized. Is that suffering is independent from all that other crap. So your search... So you have kind of different things going on, right? So there's sadness because you broke up with someone that you've been with for five years. That's like absolutely like a psychosomatic thing. There are just parts of your physiology that are going to make you feel sad. Yeah. Unfortunately, you're just going to have to feel that way for some time. There are a lot of things that you can do that, you know, people kind of like common wisdom will say. Like, so spending time with nature is great. It sounds like you're from Europe, so it's probably cold where you are. Yeah, it's freezing in Denmark. Yeah, so if you're in Denmark, so I I don't know exactly what what people do there. But, you know, I'd say like, (laughs) you know, listen to sad music, spend time with nature, spend time with animals, spend time with people that care about you. All those things are important. And there are two other things to think about. One is that some of your suffering is going to be because of the shattered expectations from this relationship. And one of those shattered expectations, this is a really important one, is that as long as she was in your life, you didn't have to figure out that other source of deeper sadness. That she was going to cure you of that other deeper sadness. That's the most dangerous expectation. But now you realize that she hasn't cured you of it and that it's still there. Yeah, and that's, it's also it's also a realization that that that, that I've had myself um, thinking about the whole breakup and stuff because I'm, as you're saying, sad that we broke up. But now I have this other feeling that have been gone for five years and then predates all of this and predates all into my teens and uh, and stuff like that. And and I think I have I, I can really distinguish between those two elements. And I know that yes. I have to work on the on, on the ladder. Exactly. Like the right. With, so that's I, so I think it's awesome that you recognize that these are two fundamentally different things. And this is what like yeah. that hopefully uh, I've illustrated it enough. And for, for all of y'all that are listening, understand that like happiness and unhappiness and depression are like two different things. And and this is but, the conversation that I have with people is that we could treat your depression. We've we've sort of dealt with your depression. Now you're unhappy. There's a different road for that. But I have a, I have a question then about yes. My sadness relating to my girlfriend I know is sadness, yep. and and suffering to a to a certain degree, but can I still be depressed because yes, the, all right, because my whole life I have had had this um, numbness to to a desire to. Um, do anything in my life to, to complete anything um, meaningful, even even things that really interests me and and that I want to pour things into. And it, I can, re- I I know the trauma that that really um this that set this off. Uh, I don't know if you want to go into like specifics or anything. Um, but my dad got sick when I was around twelve years old, and I've I've known from that certain place in my life to now that that um i have had that feeling 
so before it's it's kind of candid i don't know if that's just childhood memories uh, nostalgia stuff but but i know that was the trigger and then certain traumas uh, after that yes. so okay yeah. keep going uh, so 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 can this like I have never went to a psychiatrist or a psychologist or anything about this sadness. I, I only went last year and I didn't follow up on it because I was too scared to talk about my feelings. Um, but, but not now, with chat, right? Yeah, <laughs> you don't, you can't, you can't see my face. Uh, <laughs> but um, but now I've, I've I've reached out to a doctor and and I Good. like I I feel. I, I haven't reached out because my girlfriend broke up with me, but I've, I've reached out because now I can really feel the the suffering of of not living. Like I know, I have I, I distinguish I distinguish my thoughts between my feelings and and logic. And I know it's for example, I know it's not good to kill yourself. I know it's it's hurting. It would hurt everyone around you and stuff like that. But my feelings say that that I I don't want to live. I don't have a desire to live. Yeah, and so that's God, I that's. Know I have to go. I That's something that you have to discover, right? So this is where like most people think, and this could be true, I, I don't really know, that a desire to live is something that people just stumble upon. There's this huge assumption that like the default state is to have a desire to live and have like goals and passions and motivations. In my experience, it doesn't fucking work like that. A <laughs> desire to live, a reason to live, is, is something that is gained through effort and sweat and hard work, exploration, pain, and reflection. Yeah. So uh, how old are you, Kevin? Tw 26. Okay. So at your age, I was doing absolutely nothing. Like, not a damn thing. I yeah, graduated from, from college with a shitty GPA, didn't have a job. Actually, I did have a job. Maybe. Actually, at 26, maybe I was doing something. I take that back. Maybe at 25. <laughs> but, I, I mean, I, I think, you know, you have to do some soul searching. And the, understand yeah, that, but... that, that, I mean, your, your life lacks meaning, which is the problem. But also that, like, meaning is not something that you stumble upon. And in your case, I think part of what's going on is, like, this trauma that you said I think is very significant. Now, this is the other problem is people confuse like trauma with depression because both of them make you feel like not doing anything. But I think the origins of these two things are very different. So if, if your root problem is that you started to feel like life was meaningless because your dad got sick when you were 12, that's where the, the, the work needs to be done. Yeah, and, and I, I think unresolved traumas, can you call that a trauma? Like sure. people dying and yeah, okay. Because... There are several of those that that I can like clearly how did you, distinguish. How did you feel them. when you? What do you remember about when your dad got sick and you were twelve? How did you feel? Oh, that <laughs> that gets really rough. I, I laugh when I'm when I'm like nervous. So yep. Yeah. Um, I I be, I actually began when he was in the hospital i i'm i'm i was being kind of a stand-up comedian because i i wanted everybody to laugh and i yeah um i felt really sad I, I don't even know if that's the word because he worked so much before that i didn't even knew him and then he was home all the time and 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 the i think the the change in our life that that he had had to be home and and the uh, change he ha had to do mentally uh, like he became another person a chronically ill person that um i don't know i was specifically talking about my feelings towards the the trauma or i'm getting confused sorry yeah i think you're doing great how uh, did it feel to see him transform That was really devastating. I I think would be the right word. Um, and and what did it even break more... within you? It broke something. Yeah, it it broke like reality that yep. um, the the thought that your parents are immortal and um, I I certain I I suddenly had to to take on a much larger responsibility at home. I... 
I think the challenge here, <laughs> Kevin, I'm going to just take a shot in the dark because we're going to have to transition soon. All right. So I'm, I'm sorry. It's no, 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 not to no, no, take no, up time. Like, no, 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 no. I mean, I invited you on and I'm really glad you came on. I, I'm going to apologize to you because I think the challenge here is that the feeling it created in you is not something that a 12 year old knows how to put words to. And no, I think the feeling. And, and it, I still can't put words to I'm it. Gonna, I'm going to try. I think the, the right. feeling it created for 12 year old you is what's the fucking point? If he can work so hard and this can happen to him. And you can build so much in life, and then you get to turn into this? Like, what's the fucking point? Yeah. Yeah, like, I've really struggled with, like, uh, what's it called? When you don't care about the outcomes of things. It's it's like a, a philosophy. Yep. Uh, yep. Yeah. That so, everything is meaningless. It's not nihilism. a stoic. Stoic, yeah, nihilism. I, yeah. I really struggled with that because uh, one other I, time when I was feeling really down, I, I I really had the thought that everything was just meaningless. Yeah. So so this is something you've got to really understand, Kevin. Is like for you, for other people, it's a philosophy. For you, it's a reality because you saw it happen to you. You saw it happen to your dad. You saw the futility of life get shown to you in the way that your dad's life crumbled apart. Right? So yeah. for other people, it's something that they read about in a philosophy class. For you, you saw that when you were 12. And it left its fucking mark. And now, <laughs> when you say, like, I have no reason to live, yeah, because you don't understand what the point is, because you were like, what's the fucking point if you can just get destroyed? And if this is like, if you can work so hard, you can build a life... You can have children, you can have family, you can have a career. Sounds like you worked a lot. And then you can get sick and it all just goes to shit. Like, why bother? Like, I don't think you're suicidal, which I know you've you said you aren't, which I'm grateful for. I, I think your problem is like, what's the point? Yeah. And so that feeling was a, it has its origins in a lesson that you learned by watching your father get sick. And until you unlearn that lesson, you're going to continue to feel this way. The right. good news is that it can be unlearned. And that you can find meaning. It's just 12-year-old you didn't understand what was going on. And the problem is that when we're young, the stuff that forms in our mind stays there but doesn't like grow with us. And someone was asking, is this a samskar? Absolutely. This is the definition of a samskar. Uh, can, can you briefly say what that is? No. Some, <laughs> all right, all right. No. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, so so I think I, I talked about samskars on a prior stream. Hopefully there's a, there's a... So I'll explain it very briefly. So a samskar is a ball of undigested emotion that sort of continues to exert an influence on your mind. All right. All right. That, that makes sense. Yeah. So uh, uh, the, the example that I use is like, if I'm walking down the street, let's say that uh, you, you ever hang out with kids, Kevin? Yeah. You have any yeah. Nieces or nephews had, or anything? Yeah. I had a niece and <laughs> when okay. I was with my girlfriend. Yeah. So, so when you, wh wh how old is your niece? Nine. Okay. So um, you, did you hang out with your niece when she was like six? Yeah. Okay. I got to know the full five years. Okay, great. So when you when, when, imagine that your your niece is six years old and you're walking down the street, and she sees a dog, and she gets excited because she likes dogs, and she pets the dog, and the dog bites her. What happens in her mind? What does she feel? Uh, she would feel scared of the dog. Absolutely, right? She's yeah. terrified. So thankfully, let's say that the dog didn't really hurt her or anything like that. She doesn't need medical attention. And then yeah. she's your niece, so you have presumably brothers or sisters who are her parents? Uh, it, Yeah, it was on my girl, girlfriend's side, so yeah, okay. like her sis, yeah. Okay, so, um, you know, let's say that you're babysitting the niece, and then the, the niece is crying, and so you're yeah. kind of thinking, like, okay, how am I going to calm this child down? And then you walk into a toy store, and then you get her, like, ten minutes later, she's got a toy in her hands, and what do you think she's feeling then? joy absolutely right yeah yeah what happened what happened to the scared what happened to the fear where'd it go is it gone 
no, it's still there. But but now she has something else to be joyous about. Okay. And what? So let's say. So how does the how does the fear come back in her? What can bring it back up? Uh, like the when she sees a dog. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And every time she sees a dog, that fear is going to return. Yeah. Now, let's say you're walking down the street and you see a dog and you reach out to pet it and it bites you. What's the first thing that happens in your mind? Um, I wouldn't get scared, but... Yes, you would. Ain't... Yeah, it's, yeah, scared of, of more pain. Yeah. In the yeah. first instant, you would have the same reaction as your five-year-old niece. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Then what happens in your mind? Yeah, I, I would be able to distinguish and get over that. I, I think I, I know what you're getting at. What am I getting at? Like, that the, like, my niece, that emotion would stay with her for a long time. But as an adult, you would be able to distinguish between having to be scared of a dog because one bit you. And then approaching another one without being scared. Yes. And the big difference yeah. is that your mind does some processing of that emotion. Live processing. It just doesn't get buried by distraction. You actually think through how you feel and you process it. Does that make sense? It, it makes a lot of sense. Like so, so my childhood self was like bit by this th trauma. Absolutely. And and like now, if it happened in, in my later years, I would be able to process it, process it in a whole other way so that it wouldn't affect my everyday life. Is that what Absolutely. you're saying? Absolutely. Yeah. Right? So if, if you had found meaning in your life and your dad passed away and got sick now, you would still be sad. You would still be grief, grieved. You would still be devastated. But you would be able to process it. And some people don't and some people do, right? Because some people like... You know, in their 20s, something bad happens to them and they're, ne they're not able to recover. So now yeah. the, big, the big problem, the big difference between you and your niece is that you have the capacity to process now. The 12-year-old year old you did not. Yeah. And so the good yeah, news but... is you can go back in time and you can sort of talk to your 12-year-old self. Right? With the help of a therapist or someone like that because that makes it way yeah. fucking easier. And with the help yeah, of things I'll... like meditation. You can go right. back and explore those feelings and you can digest them. Yeah, because, because now they, they, right at this moment, they feel numb. Like I, I have a hard time yes, reaching back and feeling yes. anything. Yeah. Do you play RPGs? Yeah. <laughs> Which RPGs? Uh, I've played World of Warcraft. Uh, okay. So in World of Warcraft, of you have an inventory, right? Yeah. The problem here is that you picked up a lot of crap, like level five, like swords and shit. Yeah. When you were 12 and it's sitting in your inventory and it's clogging up your inventory, you never get rid of it. You got to get rid of it. It's just sitting back there. And it's like yeah. buried so far in your inventory that you can't even access it. And it like, yeah. every time you open your inventory, it's there and it's just fucking taking up space. And like, you can't, like, but like so it's like, it's interfering with things, but you don't, it, it's just there. It's just like, you know, and so you've got to, you've got to process it. You've got to go back yeah. and, and, and not, so this is the tricky thing is like the instinctual solution would be what you have to do is find meaning in life, right? Like that's the standard answer. Like if you're unhappy and your life has no meaning, go and find meaning. Like we have this discord thing that you can join to where people talk about what's wrong with the world. I think that's useful. But what I want everyone yeah. to understand is that in, in Kevin's case, it's not just finding meaning. It's finding when meaning went away. Because when you were nine or ten, like life hopefully has meaning. Like it's just it's simple meaning, but it's meaning. I can re I can dis I can like uh, yeah. clearly remember which person I was before this incident and and which person I became after the incident. Yeah. There you go. So you got to go back and find that person, right? Yeah. There's a guy in chat saying vendoring your trauma absolutely. That's what you need to do. <laughs> yeah. Right? You got to vendor it. You can't just like, it's just hanging out. It's been hanging out there. And then the problem is you've, you've, you've had that shit in your backpack for 14 years. 
So you think that your backpack is like has like thirty less spaces available. Like you don't even yeah, realize. That's... It's become so normal for you that you don't even realize that that's just like you don't realize that you've got thirty backpack slots that are just taken up by crap because you've had it since the beginning, like as long as you can remember. That makes really a lot of sense. Yeah, it really does. I, I really feel like, like after the incident, like everything from being able to do well in school and and uh, like everything, yeah, the motivation and the desire to do anything like it really felt like I, I only have like a third of, of the motivation the third of everything else the third of the desire to get up yeah. in the morning and yeah yeah so it looks like two-thirds of your backpack is full and that yeah. shit is just swimming around in your unconscious mind and your mind literally like like so this is something that i want everyone to understand about the mind one of the swamis i was studying with once told me that any task that's unfinished like occupies a bit of RAM in your processor. And trauma too, in your case, I think the problem is that two thirds of your RAM is being occupied by whatever this is. By what, sorry? By, by like out. this trauma or whatever. Like two yeah, thirds yeah. of your operating power is just like clogged up. Yeah. And, and so the cool thing is that like, like we can talk about finding meaning and finding dharma and all that good stuff. You can watch some of the previous streams about that or watch, check out our YouTube if you don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But at the end of the day, in your case, I think it's about cleaning house, right? I think it's about understanding that at some point in life, you lost your sense of meaning. And life became fundamentally, like life became, so this is what happened to you when you were 12 years old. Life became a game not worth playing. Yeah. It's just not worth it to play anymore. And so now you find yourself at 26 and you're like, why can't I play this game? I think this game is fucking stupid. And I'm saying, yeah, you do, because you learned that when you were 12. It became a stupid game. Yeah. But you got to go back. Yeah. Right? And you got to find out, like, what happened? Like, why did I think this game? Oh, the reason the game fucking sucks is because my controller got unplugged. And so I just respawn and I get, like, camped by these assholes and I can't shoot. And I can't move. Or I can use Waz to like move around, but I can't use my mouse to like point at anything. Now we're playing an FPS, by the way. <laughs> yeah. And then it's yeah, like, sure, you can, you can, in theory, you can play FPS with just a keyboard, in theory. But boy, is that going to be a shitty game to play. You feel really crippled, yeah. And how do you feel, Kevin? Crippled, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So plug and, your and, fucking and, mouse back in and aim. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, we're going to do some meditation. <laughs> like with me, or should I jump off? I mean, you can hang out on Discord if you want to. I'm going to transition. All right. All right, sure. Thank you okay. for your time. Thank you for, yeah, for course, everything Kevin. you Feel said. To, it, you yeah. know, reach out to Moses if you want to come back on and, and we can talk more. Yeah, sure. I'll be here for the evening. and, and I, well, I would, well, I would Tonight, really I'm going to go home and sleep and spend time with my children. Oh but, yeah, sure. But oh, but I thought you have, meant we, uh, we have a later schedule tonight. where where you can you can come on and we can spend like an hour together. Oh okay, yeah. that would that would be awesome. Yeah, I'll I'll uh, I'll I'll write Moses. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Thank you so much. Sure. How do we do a round of applause for Kevin? <laughs> okay. Thanks yeah. a lot, Kevin. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Okay. So, yeah, so I, I think, I think you know, Kevin was struggling for the words. I think crippled is a good word. All right, so let's do, let's do meditation. Now the question is, what kind of meditation are we going to do to, given the situation today about trauma, meaning, 